are so many stories out there about Chicago's youngest victims who are caught up in this cycle of violence that has been gripping the city. Now, so many of those stories you don't hear a lot about. They don't get a lot of attention. But this one did. Earlier this year, 16-year-old Chicago rapper Keith Kozard's video, I Don't Like, went viral. and got more than 19 million hits on YouTube. But Kozart, also known as Chief Keith, wasn't just a rapper. He allegedly has ties to Chicago street gang, the Black Disciples. Chief Keith signed a multi-million dollar deal with a major label in June. That got a lot of attention, including the attention of Chicago rapper Joseph Coleman, also known as Lil Jojo. BK, Chicago BK, police say Lil BK, Jojo was affiliated with the rival gang, crack Gangster crack Disciples. Crack Lil Jojo crack taunted crack Chief crack Keith crack by making his own version BK, of Chief Keith's track, 300, changing it to 300K. BK, that homemade music video shows a baby-faced Lil Jojo with his friends waving automatic weapons. What happened next unfolded over less than two days. On September 4th, 4.04 p.m., Lil Jojo posted a video of himself and his friends shouting insults at one of Keith's associates. At the end of that video, you can hear someone shout, I'ma kill you. 7.30 p.m., that same day, Lil Jojo tweeted he was on 69th Street. Minutes later, someone in a Ford Taurus pulled up and shot him. He was dead on the scene. A tweet was made from Chief Keefe's account mocking the death, saying it was sad because Lil Jojo, quote, wanted to be like us. That tweet ended with LMAO. Keefe claimed his Twitter account was hacked and that he had nothing to do with the murder, a murder that started online. Well, Lil Jojo's mother... Robin Russell and also Lil Jojo's brother, John Coleman, join me now from Chicago. Thank you both uh, for being here with us. Um, Ms. Russell, let me ask you first, certainly sorry for your loss, my first time uh, having a chance to talk to you, but uh, who do you think is responsible for your son's death? Chief Keefe. You believe he himself pulled the trigger? I don't believe him, him his, himself pulled the trigger. I believe he paid somebody to do it. Ma'am, do you fear? Um, why speak out now? You're talking to me here in a television interview. What would you like to come of this and you speaking out now? And do you fear for your own life? I would like justice, justice to come from this and to show kids that it's a better way to get an education. And yes, I feel for my own life. Well, well ma'am, uh, is there any update on the case? Are you any closer in your opinion, to that justice that you are seeking now? Um, they have a couple leads. Where they're still working on it. Do you think uh, that your son's life is valuable in the eyes of the rest of the country, people in Chicago, the authorities, or is this just another young black man who is now a number, a statistic? I think, I think that my brother is something different than what's going on because because of the music. That's, that's what um, built like a, a bigger stage, a bigger spotlight for what's going on, because he did the music thing. But we, we don't want him to just be, you know what I'm saying, remember there's just another kid who died. I feel like he died for a purpose, whether it was intentional or not. And we want to make sure that's expressed, you know what I'm saying? My brother did die for a reason, and we need to what, what, do some. I guess what was that purpose, and what can we get from this or learn from this moving forward? He... He died for what he wanted to do. He, want, he was just working, you know what I'm saying, make his family successful. So in my eyes, he, he, he died because of that song. And that song was a plan to get us, you know what I'm saying, fed, okay. have our team, okay. have our family sitting comfortable. Okay, Miss, Miss Russell, did you know your son was affiliated with a gang? A little joke? No, I did not. Um, what are you going to do moving forward then to make sure your other kids don't meet that same fate? Or do you feel powerless when you're going up against the influence of the streets and of the peers that are around? Well, I don't feel it's my fault because all I can do is raise my child. I can't hold his hand 24-7 when he goes in the streets. I teach him right from wrong, but like I said, I have other kids. I, I can't be there with him 24 hours. Ma'am, he wanted to be a rapper, but Ms. Yes. Russell, what did you want from his life? What did you see as his other options? 
Well, I was I was for whatever he was for. If he wanted to do music, then that's what I was for. I love the music that he did. He loved music. Uh, John, let me bring you back in. Uh, yes, sir. Are you affiliated with a gang as well? No, sir. Uh, but you're hoping to be a part of the rap game, as you were saying a, a little earlier, too? Yeah, actually, I actually started rapping before my brother, so that's why when my brother came in, how are you, how, how are you going to avoid the same fate? Well... Well, my brother slipped up is obviously the title of his song and with the hook and what the song was about. So he messed up right there. So where I learned from that mistake is not to go target any any direct um, large group of people. If I have a problem with somebody, my mentors have expressed to me that I need to go at that person, not not the whole the whole group. Is, is, is Miss Russell, does that a lot of people will be confused hearing that that a song can get you killed? That should not be the case. Well, it, it shouldn't be the case, but it can. Well, we certainly see. And, and Miss Russell and, and John, so sorry for your loss. I'm glad to talk to you. Sorry it was these circumstances that brought us together, but you have an important story uh, for our audience. So thank you for sharing it, and we certainly hope to follow up with you both. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.